I don't know why I don't like this song, but it's stuck in my head now. It that one has never stuck in my head. The one that sticks in my head is the universe is revolving in a like d d from. Um... No, no, no. Have you um, gathered up enough babies and sacrificed them so we can go live or what? Uh, um, We're live right now. Second. Oh right, okay. I it's you know it's getting harder and harder to find that many kids each week. That's why I, I've got a wife that pumps them out for the sacrifice. That's good thinking. Yeah, that's yeah. good thinking. Yeah. 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 What else would I want kids for? A cheap alternative to turkey at Christmas. Oh boy, none of us are actually ever more go expensive. This. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's probably a good thing that none of us are ever going to be politicians. Let's be very honest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would, I, I would fucking stand on this as a manifesto, mate. 
I don't know what you're fucking talking about. I hate humans. Fucking kill us all. That's my fucking promise as a manifesto. I will do this planet a favor and I will wipe us out as a species and let the dolphins take over. We've had our turn. We fucked it. Let the dolphins have a go. Octopuses. And Corvids. I don't care who it is. It's not my problem. I'm dead. I learned something very interesting the other day. There's two separate sets of incredibly intelligent uh, birds. One, as we all know, are the corvids, the crows and the ravens, um, yep. who are apparently extremely serious. They do nothing but work. They don't like they. Well, I've they never are heard very one tell <laughs> But oh, no. then no, Corvids, Corvids play all the time. They, they play, but apparently they play in a serious way, and they're very logical in their play, and they build tools for specific reasons. And then apparently there's a type of parrot that's also very intelligent, um, but they have a specific call for playtime. Ooh, I like and that. if any of them do this playtime call, they all just start playing. But you can actually, like... if there's two of them in an area and someone else plays the call and there's no third bird, the two birds will look at each other and say, you know, neither of us are making that call and we don't give a shit. And they just start playing anyway. Which I thought was really, really fun. I don't know. Was that the yes. point? I, I don't know what the point of the story was. It was so long ago. I forgot. I don't know what the point of it was. It's either. It's just something I learned that I thought was really interesting. Do you know why the there's no painkillers in the jungle? Why? Because the parrots ate them all. Oh, God. That's horrible. Oh. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, British painkiller parrots eat them all. Parrots ate them all. Oh, it's didn't name something else here, but it's uh, I know. Yeah. yeah, it's just gonna be the thing. Yeah, right. Oh, anyway. that's painful. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Hey, you should uh, hold start out. Seats I got, got, nope, 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 nope. I have to tell you guys about this because it is terrifying. Okay. I found out this week that ravens uh, recruit wolves to really? hunt <laughs> with them. Hey, what, yes. they, what, what, what for? Yes. To hunt with them, the wolves kill things, and then the ravens come along and eat the, the remainder. But they like recruit wolf packs to be their like ground army. <laughs> it is I didn't think ravens could get any cooler, but now they did. It is nuts. Um, I know I, that... I was reading about this, and to the point where apparently they get pretty attached to like individual wolves. And so, like, if a wolf becomes a lone wolf, the raven will, like, go with it and leave with it. <clears throat> That's cool. It's fascinating. But basically, I yes, there are these, these air and ground armies marching through our forests. I think it's crows that remember faces. I have, oh, yes, a, po I have a possibly apocryphal story about that that I've Ooh, I like um, Where there cool. were... I don't remember crows or ravens, one of them building nests on telephone poles in Japan. Um, and, you know, workers were sent around to destroy the nests. So the crows started remembering the faces of the, and the employees that were sent to destroy the nests, started attacking them in the streets, even when they weren't wearing their, like, worker stuff. So the workers started wearing like masks to disguise their faces when they were destroying the crow's nests and the crows upped the solution by just building a nest on every single telephone pole and having like hundreds of fake nests to the one nest that was real until people gave up and stopped destroying their nests because uh don't fuck with corvids I also read a really so interesting. Else, like, to be raving on about. Yeah, I uh, I read a really interesting story about a wolf that lived to like an abnormally old age, 
and was really, really respected amongst wolves. And there was a younger wolf that this wolf, like, they didn't get along. And they were fighting at one point, and the older wolf won the fight, but chose not to kill the younger wolf. Um, I did notice, but, you know... Oh. I I wanted to tell my wolf story! Dude, tell mm-hmm. your wolf story. I don't remember where I was anymore. We got to move on now. It's, oh, I fantastic! Uh, older wolf, younger wolf. Older wolf wins, but didn't want to. Right. It did. This is what happens when he takes a pause. Wolf. It didn't want to kill the younger wolf. It left the younger wolf, um, because it realized, like, when it died, that younger wolf would be a, like a a strong wolf to take over the pack mm-hmm. which is i don't know it, it there's a lot more if you actually read like some stories from like wolf scientists they, they're so fucking smart was it, i'm sorry was that it basically you forgot the life cycle of a wolf for a moment there hmm? so? isn't that am i am i isn't that the life cycle of a wolf like the the leader of the pack gets old and then he just like at some point he just fucks off yeah but uh, normally so not, just yes but he normally kills challengers not doesn't like go okay i beat you but you can just win oh, anyway. really? i i thought wolves were the <clears throat> few that don't actually kill when they have a fight i thought that was one of the special um, things um, most, about a wolf most animals don't kill when they have fights usually it's oh, by okay. usually it's by accident um oh that does make sense uh, like for example, moose have giant fucking antlers, but they rarely kill each other. It's usually by accident when they do. I did mm. hear about this one wolf that actually started using disguises to try and get its prey. Mm, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, but it was found out because you know it had its eyes were just so big and its teeth, its were teeth so, big. so long. Yeah. All right, all right, fine. I guess <laughs> the lab coat is so white. <laughs> I guess we can talk. That about was the Cersei. pet dog. The lab. It was uh, a white lab. So, there was a thing that happened this week. There's a couple fucking things that happened this week, Eric. We were going to talk about the most important thing first, right? The thing that's going to affect literally everyone that's watching this. The yeah. uh, discount on Steam for Suicide Squad that we're all rushing to get to, right? I mean, what? it's not very less than a month often. after release. Yeah, less than less than two hundred players concurrent. Oh, no, oh, fucking oh, shit. Oh. Yeah. there are more than two hundred players concurrent on like the <laughs> worst game in the world. The 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 kicker is that was the last thing we have for Kevin Conroy as Batman as well. Yep. And the kicker that is awful. Warner Brothers are going to stop making AAA games. Yeah, yeah well bad. they work anyway, obviously. So <laughs> Where, Where's the drawback here? Oh man, uh, I was laughing so hard when they were uh, when the U- Ubisoft uh, um, executive there called uh, uh, Skull and Bones a quadruple A game. Yeah. Everyone was like, why is it so expensive since it's a live service game? And he's like, well, it's $80 US because it's a quadruple A game that then they... proceeds to earn, um, like, it's... I don't know, what was it, like a 50% or I mean, something? He didn't he didn't know, it here a quadruple it A game, but I bet they couldn't even get like 200 players on a shard. Unlike. Yeah, really quickly, though, I, I, I. That was beautiful, Shiver. I love it. But, like, there is a problem with executives right now saying, okay, it cost us this much to make. We're probably going to get this many players. We need to price it at $90 Canadian or $80 US or whatever to make our money back. Rather than saying, okay, if we price it at $30 you know, so many more people will buy a $30 game. Yep. You know? 
And it's I just, it's my calculations are, I don't think their calculations are right. No. Um, yeah. So as, as Shiver very eloquently, um, uh, segued, ruined. I know. Look, I'm just, okay. I'm sorry. I'll go away. So, Nakara, oh, what, what was this annoyed. big news that happened in Star Citizen this week? I'll just read this. Uh, Evocati Tech Preview Server Meshing Playtest is now open and will run through the weekend. Please read notes for jump instructions. You'll be running a couple of Focus 2-hour playtests this weekend to increase player counts to 200 and then to 400. So, we have server meshing working in Evocati with with jump points. That is really all I need to say. Star mm -hmm. Citizen is real, <laughs> as David put it. Uh, it's just I, like the song said. I will note, um, Jake had a fun uh, Twitter post, uh, basically yep. saying that. You know, confirming when the first backer went through a jump point, which is honestly really fucking cool. That's pretty cool. It's a right-handed telecaster, ladies. I do like that you went back mirror. under the desk after you said that. Yeah, you're a goofball. I'm a goofball. Do you know that the telegraph uh, the telecast was designed for women? That explains why it's the perfect guitar. Oh fuck off. What? That thing is a heavy, cumbersome piece of shit. I love it. He seems to like it. With a humbucker that's underpowered, which is why they have to put it at an angle. It sounds good. At the same good. time, it's a classic. Don't get me it's... wrong. If you're into a Fender, yeah, all right. I am into Fender. You shouldn't put your plectrum in the strings like that. Why not? Stretch out your strings. Don't care. I need strings on all of them. Runs out of tune, decreases string length, uh, string life. Uh oh. I've had those strings on there for like three years. And it can also eventually warp your neck. And if you haven't got a, uh, ah, oh shit, what's it called? Uh, the iron bar that runs through the guitar neck it has a specific name. It's cra 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 cross I think bar, it's um, a stiff neck. Truss bar? Or is it's a, a rod and, uh, yeah, I don't know. Truss rod? Truss rod? Yeah. You'll have two small screws. Anyway. Thank you, J Jade Star Watcher. It is a trust rod, yeah. I, 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 it was four years away from my fucking baby guitars when I got back. And it was like, yeah, I, I, the first one I got out was a Washburn Culprit because it loved that guitar. And it was like, oh, yeah. Still able to play. Wonderful. I play like shit still, but I'm still able to play. And yeah, I really need to tune up my BC Rich and my Jacksons. That blue one, that blue bass back there. I, uh, it's the first space I owned, and a couple of years ago, I decided it would be fun to pull out all of the frets and fill in the the fret bars and turn it into a fretless. That's my fun guitar story. I've never heard of fretless bass, but I would love to. Um, uh, so, Star Citizen. You yeah. know, I think it's kind of funny that this is like such a big week for Star Citizen and we're 15 minutes in and really talked about it. I mean, this is really this is really the way the show goes. On brand, yeah. If, um, we're, if we get to Star Citizen in the first half hour, we're doing all right. It's true. So. Star um, Citizen works. Star Citizen works. They um, they basically have the jump points in right now as uh, like featureless tunnels that you autopilot through. But the underlying tech is the important piece, and it was working. 
You, they can we, send a player from one server to another server in one system to another system. Um, that is huge, and it works, and it's seamless. Um, so the underlying idea behind Star Citizen is working. They is have huge. somewhere. They just have a huge video of it. Um, like, this is it. These are, I don't remember when Pillar Talk was, or what the pillars were, because it's been quite a while since Pillar Talk. Um, but like, this is it. This is the last one. This is server meshing and being able to jump between servers. All of the, like, necessary tech for Star Citizen to work now works. It still needs refinement. It still needs more content. Like, it needs... But those are all details. It works. The tech pieces work. That's the important part. part. <clears throat> and if they're able to get up um, to, like, 400 people on a, on a shard right now... Yeah, that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. fucking good. Yeah. Starting to get at some actual numbers there. Mm -hmm. Well, um, do you remember? <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember many, many moons ago when we were like... There are many it, moons in the There are. Um, but I, I can remember years ago us and honestly probably Jake sitting around on a podcast talking about how you know if they could only have like 64 players in an instance if you could at least like shoot across instances mm -hmm. then you could still have cat battles instance to instance even if you only had like so many people in a server and we had discussions about that because back in the day that's that's what we thought would happen. Like that's that was a yep. completely reasonable assumption. And now they're at you know testing four hundred people on a shard. It's insane. Yep, two hundred players per server. And we already know from their tests they showed us at CitizenCon that 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 you can um, shoot across servers and um, walk and walk across servers and sh and destroy things that are on another server. Um, it yeah, it works. Um, it, it, it had to because otherwise the whole project's fucked. Let's be honest. No, it's uh, <laughs> you're one hundred percent correct. However, just because something has to work doesn't mean you can get it to work. No, but it would be an interesting day if we were just here and we were just like, <laughs> so well. <laughs> We've got some bad news, run. everyone. It was a good run. So we made two hundred forty-two. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'd be happy. Oh man! But no, um, it, it's it. Yeah, it had to happen. But it, it's got so much opening up now to it. Like we no longer have to think. You know, how are we going to have Bengal carrier fights? How uh, how is all this going to work? We're starting to no see problem. it happen. We're we're starting to see how they're going to be able to handle these massive fights that are going to be inevitable, and it's going to be glorious. Glorious fucking mess. Good luck oh, to yeah. all of you who are willing to get in there and test that out. Thank you. Oh, I'm sure Evo Cotti is going to be a, a mess for a few months here, but um, that's okay. That's that's what Evo Cotti's for. And mm. uh, they'll slowly work their way up to a release candidate. But, um, but it, like 400 uh, today, that's quite phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Actually, having 400 <laughs> in the shard today is, is amazing. Look, I I disagree. I think it's really nice that they're testing 400, but I'm not going to be happy until uh, Ibukati are testing 1,000. Okay. Then we can talk. I will let you know. I will let you know when you're allowed to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. The only so, one I can ugh. think of off the top of my head is EVE Online that's regularly got like 1,000 plus players in one instance. Yeah, it's, it's probably one hell. 
and it's a lot um it's a lot um uh later to run than star citizen is uh yes a hell of a lot, hell of a, lot. a thousand is a big ask and before we even get server meshing in like a live patch we have 323 coming with a fucking metric buttload of of features oh boy uh i mean world of warcraft what is what does the server hold in that like 4000 oh, well, no it was more than that it was uh 10000 players i think okay but and how many very on... different, very, very hang, different hang on hang on hang on hang on when you say Wait, no, that was a shard. Server, that was a shard. That was a shard. Yeah, do you, I was, do, was do you mean a shard or do you mean the whole server? That they, was a they, shard. Yeah. I'm, I'm my bad. Sorry about that. I was no, 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 no. I, I, I wasn't sure. No, it was a shard. Um, and uh, yeah, I just remember the um, I remember the launch of WoW. I was covering WoW at the time, like as a, on a news site, a gaming news site. And um, I remember, I think they had um, something like 20 servers available on day one. You couldn't get into any of them. Um, <laughs> um, and they had to scramble like crazy. And they had, uh, I think by the end of the week, they were up to like 93 um, different uh, w realms you could join, right? Yeah. I, want, I um, do wonder what the state of play is going to be like for Star Citizen at launch because I, I am expecting queues but I'm wondering how they're going to counter that and what you know I'm being, it'll be interesting I mean you always want to cut, cut down on queues but you also don't want to be bleeding money out your eyeballs so um, it's I, uh, <laughs> delicate balance I you know, look I very very much respect Everyone that is an Evo Cotty. Um, yeah, wait, no, that's not what you said that. before we scratch went that. live. You were talking about how scratch bad that. they all were. Scratch and they that. All smell. Rewind. Scratch that. Rewind. I very much respect everyone in Evo Cotty that isn't a complete ass and leak shit that they're not supposed to. Um, I I like everyone that respects NDAs grumble mm. anyway um no i i really like the people that are like god i don't know persistent crazy dedicated enough to be Ivocati. yeah and yeah, sure. i really and honestly i hope that that CIG, I know most most of Evocati respect the NDAs, which is why most of Evocati are fantastic. Um, honestly, though, I hope that uh, CIG abuse the hell out of the Evocati and say, like, okay, look, uh, here is a day. That's we want good. we want to get twenty five hundred people on a server, five thousand on two shards. Yep, test it see what happens um it will crash it will it will <laughs> but they will get data from that um yep. hell divers yep. 2 came out a couple of weeks ago fantastic game i love it but its first like week and a half it was unplayable because hell divers 1 had a i think they like their peak on Steam was like under seven thousand concurrent, right? Hell Divers oh, two, different. Hell Divers two. Once they started fixing their server issues, was hitting seven hundred and fifty thousand concurrent. Holy shit! So they had not anticipated the number of concurrent players, and they they like their their server. Tech we did really just, good, boys. <laughs> It was not, it was not oh, ready, man. right? So I would, I really want CIG to break it, you know, like just break everything and figure out where it oh, breaks yeah. and why it breaks. Cause that's the only way to fix it. And that's the, that is the huge advantage they have having, having a stupid number of built-in testers already to 
ready and willing, you know, yep. to, uh, to mess with the game. Um, they can torture test the crap out of it. So see where their limits are, see where they, where they can remove the limits, right? Like what, do, what do yeah. we need to do to make that limit go up type of deal? <clears throat> Avocados. But yeah, um, in the end, in the end, the, the they'll find a good number. I'm sure that they would love to get to a thousand players per server, but I'm not sure if they can. Um, and then they would just start increasing the number of servers per shard. Yeah. Well, and right now they're doing one server for stat and one server for pyro, right? Yeah. I'd imagine some of their next tests will be, you know, one server for the planets in Stanton and one server for the space or so, like, yeah. something like or like one that. server for the left half of Stanton. Well, no, because the yeah. planets rotate, so that wouldn't be as easy. But like, unless That'd be fine. I wonder like, if, can... The, if you can if you can seamlessly transition between servers, that's one way to test it. <laughs> pass pass we... the planets between servers. Yeah, can we can we pass the planet between servers? Oh man. Yeah, one server per planet is probably the best end scenario there. Um and may maybe so one server per planet and then one server that oversees the whole system outside of the planets. Um yeah. and I think that that's the best way to do it, but I mean I'm not a I'm not a server meshing scientist, so <clears throat> Now, server meshologist, server meshologist, I think is the the appropriate term. I, yes, it is. Um, Shiver, I think the kids call them meshes. Meshers. Oh, meshers. Okay, there you go. <laughs> There's a deep cut. As opposed to mashers, when you are... get them together and they're working together, they call it a mesh pit. The mesher regime, indeed. <laughs> Mesh oh part. wow! Uh, but uh, I, I yeah, it's question. um, it's oh. it's really amazing to actually like, you know, so many times I gotta I gotta talk about this because it's important. Yeah. So many times we've seen stuff at Citizen Con and we're like, oh, that's really cool, and then we just never see it again. It's like it just vanishes into the ether. Either it was a tech worm. demo or either it was a tech demo or it was just not feasible or whatever. Um it is so cool to have them show off server meshing at Citizen Con and say hey, hey, it works. And then six months later it's in Ibukati and we're like, Yeah, let's do this. Let's mesh these servers. You know. <laughs> I have a question for you. So we have server meshing now. It works. They've shown that it works. It's now live for some people it working. And they got it working in about six months, which is, I think, better than most people expected. But this is the easy part. What do you think about the next part of server meshing, which is dynamic? Like, how... <laughs> how he directed this question to Shiver entirely. Yes, Shiver, tell us. <laughs> I... Bastard. <laughs> I'm going to sound really... I mean, I don't want this to sound really cynical. I'm trying to keep it more in a realm of realistic. I can't help but wonder, and this is all complete theory crafting, all right? This is me just I, I, I'm throwing tissue at the wall and seeing if it sticks. Um, I wonder if they've put so much effort into getting static server meshing in now which, which is a proven technology it's a done technology it's totally fine you know this is how it's done this is standard it wasn't 
expecting major hiccups, major hiccups, anything that comes up. Oh, we know how to fucking handle this. Yep, done. There we go. Bosh. Now we've got that in there. We've seen a jump point. This is going to keep us amused for maybe a year. And this way they can get certain teams focused off and certain things for, I don't know, maybe a certain single player game that uh, is approaching gold uh, release. Um, and also at the same time, they can sit there for like a, you know, they might have bought themselves a year, a year and a half, maybe two years with static server meshing while the network engineers are sat there working on um, uh, dynamic server meshing because it, <laughs> it's, it, it's insane. Basically, it's absolutely insane. And um, yeah, good luck with that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can't hear you, David. I'm coughing. I see. Um, what do you think, Eric? Basically, what Shiver said. I think they will work on on. Um, I think this will be a big project for the network guys for a long time. I don't expect us to see once static server meshing is in. They don't need dynamic server meshing as i've said before it's not an a1 requirement for the game to work it is a nice to have so i think that that will be the big project the big long-term goal for the networking team and in the meantime they're going to undertake the work of the rest of the company will undertake the work of making star citizen into a finished game or something like that you know, because they're pretty, they're at the point now where the tech works. So now they're doing content. They need to put game systems in place and, and locations in place. And they're yeah. essentially ready to rock and roll. Right. So, you know, they could, they could um, put like, basically all they have to do at this point is get Vulcan working. And um, I, I know it already works, but you know, finish the work their work on Vulcan, and then um, and then figure out how many servers they need for each system to make everything run nice and smooth, and make the AI work properly and all of that stuff. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna uh, be. What do you think? I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely insane here. Because I mean, that's uh, you know, it is me every day. But I'm just I'm thinking about a number of the other texts that CIG have put in place and have quite frankly pulled out of their asses, um, where no one expected it to happen. Um, and I don't know for some reason I I have a feeling that next year we're going to hear about dynamic, like early next year. They'll be like, by the way. I mean, Eric and I aren't we saying figured it out. it's going to take two years. We're saying they've bought maybe two years worth of time before people are like, so yeah, about that yeah. dynamic server meshing, huh? How's that going? No, buddy? I mean, ideally, no, ideally, from the player's point of view, we'll never even really notice. Um, mm. Because. If they, um, actually, we might notice there may be servers that get overloaded with static. Um, yeah, 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 that would make more sense. So you there may be some, think, there may really? be some, yeah, yeah, for sure. If all the players on the entire shard decide to go to one place at one time, um, that server could get, could bog down and then crash. Um, mm -hmm. so I think they're, I, I think they've, the, like... um, it won't be invisible to players, probably. I thought it might be for a moment. Um, so yes, there will probably be some ask from the players to get it up and running, but I do think it's going to be years rather than like months after. It's it's a hard thing to do. I, I but then again, you know, this is the age of automation, right? The machine learning and all that shit. Maybe it's a lot easier now than I thought it than I think to get I, to get I... an existing process like static like static server meshing to be automated i don't know 
I think they're going to find a way to do it a lot faster than we think. I have okay. no reason to think that. I just feel like <laughs> they figured they figured out static server meshing, and now they're going to be like, oh, well, what if we just do this? Ha, ha, hey, hang works. on, hang 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 on. Bit different. Bit different. Yep. Imagine... Imagine you've got to land a rocket, mm -hmm. right, on a <laughs> yeah. landing pad. Uh -huh. No problem, you know? There's a landing pad. Space is there. There. Imagine no if problem. this landing pad, no though, problem is... is... <laughs> Compared to... Imagine if the fucking landing pad's fucking moving. Yeah. So you've got to account for absolutely all of that. It, it suddenly... That's a hell of a lot more complicated than having to account for a static location. It is. I, I get what you're saying, and 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 again, but static server meshing, proving technology, no real huge deal here. Every fucking MMO has static. It, it, it's simple. It's going to work. They didn't create this, but they did do this very quickly, and it's a proven technology. And I just can't help but wonder if it's like, okay, we can. We've got 400 on this as it goes now. Let's see what we can push it to. If we can get 800 people, that's going to keep them happy for the next two years while we're working on this. We can still add things to the sandbox, some play tools. You know what, Shiver? You're, you're exactly right. That's exactly the, like, the stance that CIG have taken for other things like... Like food. I mean, we just need a plate of food. We don't need the plate of food to dynamically like disappear as we eat it, right? I'm just, you know, they're <laughs> fucking insane. <laughs> That's where I'm basing I, my I'm thoughts so, on. It, it's so funny. I mean, it, that that demo really stuck with you, but there's a good reason for it. That does, I've never seen another game even bother trying that. See what the worst bit is. Those fried eggs look really good, and I don't even they like do. eggs that much. Oh my god. Uh, all right. All right. We should probably talk about some of the. Because we missed two weeks. Are we going to talk about gentle German boys? Because the chat is, so we might as well. Lear I don't know what that is. From Stanton. Ouch. The, the gentle German boys. They're working on uh, the dynamic server meshing. Oh, oh, okay. oh, I see what you're saying. Wait, is it the Germans working on static server meshing? I thought it was. Uh, oh wait, no, isn't uh, the, it the, um, the Canadians? Montreal? Yeah, it's Montreal. I don't. Know, maybe I'm wrong. It's Turkey. Yeah. Oh, the gentle German boy who meshed our servers at CitizenCon. Yes, yes, of course. Oh, okay. <clears throat> The gentle German boy that meshed our servers at Sid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing? I don't server? know. There's a lot of things that that could mean, and uh, let's just. So, how about um, <laughs> um, moving right along? Capital <laughs> ships. I, I actually, I really like that CIG did this for everyone that wasn't able to get in and look at the inside of an Idris, I really like that they're showing off the inside of the Idris. Like, they have an entire episode that's just, hey, this is the inside of the Idris, this is what you missed. Thank you, CIG. Like, genuinely, thank you for, for doing this, because... Yeah. No, it's, it's, just it's nice. 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 Was it awesome, Jade? It's nice, but I've seen it so often. I'm kind of disappointed by it. It's not as inspiring as it once was. This ship is pretty uh, sweet. They, they, it's cool. It's David, big, know, but it's like... I know David despises it, but I, I like it. He despises everything that's cool. It's not but, but cool. I, I'm it's... just at this point, I feel desensitized to seeing the Idris now. You know, we've been teased enough by the Idris. So yeah, okay. It's like, okay, cool. Just imagine what a what new player is going to feel like when they... Just imagine what a new player is going to feel like when they see that. Uh, true. True, true enough. It's Imagine gonna be what very, new player's gonna very feel like cool. when he sees that fucking destroyer though instead. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's it's, such a cool shot. It's a really Jeez. good shot. I I can I will never get over the superfluously raised bridge. 
with empty yeah. space underneath it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that is a how, stupid... How else is the enemy going to know where to aim? It is a stupid design... 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 design de, de, strokes having to David. Uh, it's a stupid design... De, design... Fuck. It's a very obtuse angle. I hate it. Called violence. Yes. I hate it. I, uh, I, I, I'm not a fan of the ship. It's, well, fuck you. It's awesome. Yep. It's a exactly. giant stew. It, 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 it's but giant it. and it's in game and it's fucking there and it's amazing. Yep. Like th I this is a fucking this is a fucking game. The size of this fucking ship could be a game, a single player game. You could say a fucking single <laughs> yeah. player narrative in that the fucking ship game. and it would sell. It would be fine. But no, 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 no. No, no. That's just one ship. We got planets bigger than that. Oh man. I love the gravity generator. What They're is so that? Cool. That's cool. Ooh. That's really cool. Man, <laughs> it's so amazing that they, like, oh, I can't wait. This is where you're going to be in uh, Squadron, right? Is it the uh, Idris? Hmm. I, yeah. Eventually, oh. I don't think, do you start off? I thought you started off on a Shubin station and eventually go to an Idris. No, you I, go I'm, no, I guess no, the other I'm way wrong. around. I guess the other way yeah. around. Um, you go, yeah, I rem I'm remembering it now. It's been a while. But, uh, man, a lot of care has been taken in preparing this ship. Which makes sense, but it's still amazing. I I'm am wondering... really excited to see this ship in Squadron and to never interact with one in star citizen i'm happy to interact with them in star citizen i'm just never going to but oh, i'm wondering what how do you, um, you won't. boarding actions will play like on this how you know how viable no, uh, no, one moment. how small of a team is viable still to take over an idris uh, what sort of things are they looking at for sabotage here? You know, could I do something with a very small crack team of elite cooks, um and just fuck this shit up without being seen? I'd be happy to take the fucking time for that, you know? If that's like a month-long project for me and my four mates, that's what we do is we log in and we fuck this ship up in between play sessions i want to know if that's possible or is it just going to be you you assault this bad boy and you take it in one or you get the fuck out i think they're going to want to leave the gameplay options pretty wide open i i can imagine being a small team trying to invade the ship being very difficult but i mm. you know i'm not but, I, but what i'm saying is it should be very difficult but it also shouldn't be impossible Again, um, and we've we've talked about this in a number of episodes recently. They should never like force you. Oh, you can't try and take the address unless you have a you know a six person. Like, let us do what we want. Full yeah, freedom. You should be able to try. I mean, if it if it's like you know, you weren't careful enough and you got slaughtered thirty seconds into your attempt. Well, that that's you know. That's the way you kind of expect it to go. But if you spend a month planning it and you know exactly like the layout of all the corridors and like maintenance tunnels and everything, you know exactly where you're going and how you're going to hit it. You have all the weapons you need and so on and so forth. Then yeah, it should totally be possible. Well, it's an FPS level. So if I'm good enough at FPS or stealth and I go yep. in there on my own and, you know, don't set off any alarms and start taking people out one by one slowly... Yeah, I should be able to to kill every single person on it and take it. Why not? Yep. A small I mean, team of later hose and clad lads <laughs> should do it. I love that. There we go. 
<laughs> a lot of I, a lot of references to those gentle German boys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh jeez! I, I, I don't show. care if you hate it or love it, Eris. It's fucking cool. You got to remember, like, look at all that. All that you can walk around. All this shit is happening all at the same time, and like, there is a game universe that is going on outside of that shit. That's fucking cool. That's really cool. I don't disagree that it's cool. I just think that the Idris looks silly from the outside the inside is very cool like don't get me wrong i love what they've done i think it's amazing I... it's a fly-through carrier yeah i don't know i'm fine with it. i like that it's a fly-through carrier i like that part i just don't like you just don't like you the know bridge. well what? i don't like the bridge and i don't like how the carrier opens at the front i love it's... how the carrier opens at the front but why is the ship right. pointed the ship would only be pointed like that if it were used for ramming. Otherwise, it's just making it harder to get out because that door is going to take longer to open. That to the like, it's just, it's just silly little I things. That, that I literally point. thought that was why it was like that. Are you saying that is not why it's like that? Absolutely cool. not why it's like that. Because if I you ram like something, to, I think it's like that to protect the railgun. But if you ram something with those doors, the doors are going to get stuck and won't be able to open anymore. You don't want to ram something mechanical. Yeah, but if you're considering using it as a ram, you're at this point where you're like, you know what? We might as well just fucking ram it and see what happens. You have a board <laughs> cube sitting there in front of you. You know? And you're just like, ah, yeah. oh, here we go. I saw this. It's funny. I saw this documentary once. Mm. Uh, this English woman was piloting her starship into this massive. It would look like um like a weird bird of prey in space. And just tried to park it in front in their own bridge. I saw this that documentary once where someone uh like piloted their ship at like light speed through another ship, and it blew up very prettily. I saw I this documentary shot. once where someone said. Prepare for ramming speed. Prepare ramming speed because today is a good day to die. That's a good documentary. I like that one. Today is a good day to die is one of my favorite cheat codes in video games. It was uh, invincibility mode in Warcraft 1. Nice. And 2, I think. It is a good day to die. Um, I I really do like the interior. It The interior is very well done and neatly laid out and... Um, one of the things that they were saying in in the episode is it looks really stark right now because there's no life to it. There's no people in it, and it yep. will look completely different in you know in Squadron, and that's good. Some of it actually looks a bit too dark to me, like these engineering tunnels. Why is it so dark in engineering? It's engineering. I need to see what I'm doing. Light the place up like a fucking 4th of July... I don't know. Something that has lots of light. Make there be light. Light it up like a baseball diamond. That's what they are. Diamonds. Yes. <laughs> you all right over there? I think I'm right. I'm not sure, sure about David. Uh, Darj, no carpet. Never carpet. Carpet bad. Uh, I, I, no. What? Some of us fans are a bit of carpet, you know? There's nothing wrong with a bit of carpet there. I Carpet is horrible. It's warm in the winter. I don't like carpet. It, it's very hard to get blood stains out of. We're just gonna leave it at that. No, I'm no. That's I'm no. That that sends us into territory. I can't put on Twitch. <laughs> oh man! Oh. You know, some but people yeah, are clearly. Like... 
thinking different things than I am when I say words. <laughs> Fuck. I'm tired. I'm really fucking tired. It's gonna be really fun to have gunfights in these hallways. It will. It really will. I... <clears throat> Can you imagine the, like... Like, the organization battles and the videos that are going to come out of those like yeah. crazy oh dear lord um uh, the crazy crazy huge organization battles that are going to be you know recorded and then put on youtube and it's going mm -hmm. to be amazing um the videos that come out of this game are going to be just incredible they already are but they're going to be yeah well the one, the one advantage to having this bridge like that, Eris, is when it comes to people recording their in-game footage of these combat moments they're having on the bridge, we're going to see Starship combat going on, and it's going to be instant cinematic. It's it's pretty cool. It'll be very cinematic. They're just There's no point for the empty space underneath the bridge. It should just be connected to the ship. I know. I know. It, it, yes. it, why Why do we... Why, as a species, do we think we would do that with a bridge? It's the most important part of the ship, and they think we're going to just, like, isolate it and be like, hey, look, this is how you can instantly take out this ship in the easiest way. Put all of the fucking command crew here. Basically, it's a bullseye. Shoot here. It's a stupid idea. The only... I, the only reason we do it is because that's what we do now with actual boats because you need to fucking see the sea but you don't need that in space you really fucking don't need that in star citizen especially i but it's the rule of course cool. but, it's, but, it, but yeah. it's even worse I'm sorry. like I'll be quiet it's, i'm also it's, tired it's looking at like the the star destroyer right and the star destroyer has that giant stupid mm. fucking tower at the back but at least it's all connected I don't know. I don't I don't like it. Anyway, we've now watched the entirety of the Idris stuff. We should switch over to this week's, which I really want to talk about. Um, uh oh. Well you this when you this really week... want to talk about stuff, it's because you're angry. <laughs> no. No, I'm really excited. They they okay, went good. over first off, this opening. Well done. Riffin on on uh, oh, Goldeneye, so which yeah, yeah, totally. But the the changes oh, man. that the they are making, is... the animation is Go so ahead. good on the on the guy in the huge armor trying turning and trying to run away. So cool. All of the animations have been drastically improved, it seems. Um, but. I don't know, like what they're doing with reloading here makes me extremely happy because I've hated reloading in Star Citizen to this point. It's just cumbersome and stupid. Um, but the idea now that you've got, you know, the couple mags on your on your suit and there's like a UI that tells you how many mags you have left and how many bullets are in those mags and as you're shooting that ui goes down if you have the right visor this is um and then when you swap them out you can swap out your mags until those mags are done and then there's another icon that tells you whether or not you've got an item and another mag for that gun in your backpack and then you can just reach around to your backpack and it takes you a little bit longer to reload and you get to reload like it just saves all of the pain of being like, okay, wait, inventory. Okay, that's Whoa. I. Uh, drag Whoa. this. Oh, it's not dragging onto the slot. There it is. Oh, wait, it disappeared. Like, just... <sighs> but they're not clips. And at the same time... <clears throat> at the same time, they had also, the way that they did it, also maintains their focus on like immersion and stuff like you still are you know you're reaching to a different place right to, to get the yeah. mag um and also because there's so much of this is like watching other people and what they're doing like you can also see other players like oh he doesn't have any uh clips left on him his body because he's reaching to his backpack um yeah. 
Oh, sorry, whatever. Clip magazine, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. They're not clips. Clips are for I things know. like the M1 Garand, where it's like an actual clip that goes in. These are magazines. They're yeah, I know. I use the terms interchangeably. I should. Er. <laughs> yeah, you, anyway, can, I... you can punch me later. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to leave the money on the side in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what? Dude, dude. Look, I'm not even American and I still call it the right thing. Um, oh my God. No, I, I really like that. this. It's just more... I get that Star Citizen wants to be realistic. And I'm very okay with that. There's a lot of FPS games that pull it off very, very well. Um... Watching Excuse the grenades me, way back and forth on their connection is yeah. so cool. There, there are a lot of... Well, that's exactly okay. it, Jade. Uh, and one of the, the things... Fish. Well, but one of the things they said, I think it was actually in this episode where they said it, they were like, uh, they were talking about lasers. And it made me really, really happy because apparently every time, like, people often complain about the laser weapons saying they're lasers, they shouldn't have recoil. And CIG in this episode, and I loved to hear them say it, were like, we don't care. We're giving the laser guns recoil because it's more fun. Just like mm -hmm. we're giving guns 900 years in the future the need to reload when 900 years in the future that probably won't exist because it's more fun. Um, actually, yeah, space patrol, would... a, high enough, a high enough power laser to actually do damage probably would be visible. Hmm. But they wouldn't shoot in bursts. It would be no. a laser. It would be a beam. It would be a beam weapon, like you see in like, like kind of like a phaser they... in Star Trek, and not the pulsed phaser that they decided to give later on. Balls. <laughs> uh... No, it's gone. Uh, I think the uh, that's a good one, Darsh. I think another easy explanation for laser weapons having recoil is laser weapons produce such an intense amount of heat that the gun has to uh like transfer some of that heat out and the transfer mechanism is uh recoiling the gun to get the to vent out the heat or something like like you can bullshit yeah. whatever you want but yep. at the end of the day cig there's some, are there's right some good bullshit there i can see the bullshit it's good i like it i like it High quality. But at, at at the end of the day, the point is that it's not fun if games don't if guns don't reload they, and don't have they, recoil. That I mean, there does need to be a point where it's just like this is how it is, and we're not going to do midi chlorian explanation. This is just it. <laughs> He's gone to go and throw up because I I, I made him think of those prequels. Very curious, actually, where he went. Um, I mean, lasers right. in Warhammer 40k, las guns, they have recoil. Las cannons have recoil, and their explanation is, well, it's not actually really a laser because it fires these weird energized bolts or some bullshit reason that you like so it's not really a laser gun why are you calling it a las gun and it's like it sounds cool if it's not moving parts when you trigger it it's gonna move yeah done there are moving parts so it moves <clears throat> there you go you you went. You took all that time just literally to demonstrate moving parts. Yep. Yeah. As if we anyway, don't know. I, oh, okay. He did a very practical and very legitimate demonstration of his point. Okay. That's the it. the point is, I'm really happy that CIG said that. That look, we're doing it because it's fun. Yeah. 
No, that's what they've. That's what they said before. They they want to start at a place of realism, but then they will need to, you know, look at how to go from that to making it fun. Yeah, because honestly, realism isn't that much fun. Um, for a lot of things, it's uh, pretty crappy, actually. I'm, I, 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 I Jade. Uh, starting with Pixar, a thinking person's game and many people into actual space. Back to you. Is that because it, are, are, you, are you, is this, um, I'm trying to think of a mild word for, uh, umbrage. Is this umbrage with the direction at the moment or just, you know, ob- neutral observation? I think it's rename lasers. Well, yeah, like rename, rename fucking laser guns. Is easy. I, I agree with that, but it, it was you know pitched, pitched as a thinking man's uh, thinking person's game. Uh, many people into actual space backs it, and it's like, am I missing something? Because I thought even if they still fuck around with things, there's still the potential that they. Could, oh, okay, I'll be quiet then. Thank you. <laughs> it does sound like a little German boy's name, doesn't it, Baring? Um, yeah, that's fair. If you want to rename lasers, that's cool. Yeah. Maybe 900 years in the future, the lasers are really, really angry and loud. And they kick. Those photons, man, they got some They got some boots. They'll kick your ass. No? Okay. Look, no, hang on. <laughs> they have condensed the energy so much. We know that, you know, the output of a sun, solar energy... <laughs> push things push in space. Yeah, solar, sure. solar sails work. So maybe the energy in these laser <laughs> weapons is so condensed. Oh I've, got, I've got it. I've got one. I got the perfect one. Go. Shut the fuck up and play the game and have fun. <laughs> Jade, I will never stop. This is me. Um, also, Jade, anyway. thank you very much for being here. You're a lot of fun to chat with. You have this much time and this much energy to put into thoughts like that about complete <laughs> bullshit. This is rubbish. You, how dare you waste your time doing that when there are unsolved crimes going on in the world? And you're just there, like, all right, so let me see a laser recoil. No. You know, I could solve world hunger. I could solve many crises right now. I could dedicate my life to being selfless and advancing us as humans. Shiver. But no. Shiver. I've fucking already fucking gun. done that. Where's my Jackie I'm... Potato? Yeah, but I've dedicated my life to improving environmental sustainability. This is just my side gig. Um, anyway, what I'm trying to say is <laughs> I'm. this episode makes me really, really happy as a lover of FPSs to see all of the fixes that are going to be coming to the FPS portion of the game, which I think has been lacking for a long time. It hasn't felt smooth to play yeah um i'm also really really excited i've been i've heard tentatively that in some of the evocati testing the server fps has been really high and when the server fps is really high the ai are terrifying and i'm really excited to try that i want i want to fight like smart ai yeah we should do that together. It would be fun. I would I would love to. Um, die. So, okay. A couple things about the scopes. First, the scope looks really good. The recoil looks fantastic. I love what they've done with the recoil. But I really wish when you were zooming in on an 8 times scope, the outside of the scope wasn't zoomed in. And it was only, like, the outside there should not zoom in. It should just be the scope that zooms in. And yep, that bugs me. I think it's, but it I, like... honestly think it's, I honestly think it's a game thing. I like guess it's a game engine thing. I think it's easier and cheaper, like, yeah. like the way it is rendered, to do it that way. And it, it looks better than it being, like, a black box around it so i'm i'm not gonna complain too much if they they stick that way um it looks better 
and the recoil looks great. I, I think they were saying that the recoil is procedural Man. now as well. The well, even that that recoil looked so good, where he's on his knees and it's it's like juddering him back. Oh. I do think it's really funny the the scene with the guy just shooting the other person in the head from like two feet away. <laughs> oh, pretty funny. Well, and and uh, what was it? They were also talking this week about. Um, <laughs> don't really have any. I don't think there's anything that shows it. I think they were just talking about it. <laughs> Jade. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, oh. They were talking about how um, the crosshair. They they're implementing like a three D crosshair in the game if you have a combat visor. So the crosshair will show exactly where your bullets are going to hit because they're showing exactly where your gun is aiming. Um... <laughs> Now, the real question is, if you shoot one of the gentle German boys with one of these weapons, can you then respawn before they come and get their corpses or something? I don't know. Shiver does that. Um, Just, so the question... Uh, sorry, go ahead. You have all the... Look, dude, you've got the fucking ingredients right there in front of I you. I know. Like, one of the key points to even play on. Reload. Um, Do I reload fast enough that I can see myself come back and reload my gun? Yeah. <laughs> this is no, why I leave no, it no, to no, you. No. So I just wanted to talk about the question that um, that uh, Lady Space Patrol asked. Um, yeah, so the this team, I believe, is the actor. It was the, this was the actor feature team, right? That's who they were talking about too. I genuinely don't know. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's who it is. Um, so they are also working on things like cargo system refactor. Uh, <clears throat> inventory stuff, salvage. Um, but mostly it's surrendered. It's not all FPS purely, but it's centered around your player's movement and um, that type of deal. So, and, and features related to that. I think that's mostly what they do. Um, so, yeah. one of the things that, that this episode really highlighted or showed that they're, I think they've already done thinking on it, they just haven't implemented most of it, is they were talking about how, so the 3D crosshair only exists with combat visors. And they were talking about that as, you know, one of the things that differentiates the armor types. Because you might not have very many light armor combat visors. But I yeah. think we're going to start getting to see where, you know, the different armor types start diverging from each other. Which I think that's kind of exciting. I, I hope that, you know... I mean, there's... There's a lot they can do with it. Um, you can have, you know, certain armors have, you know, stabilization so that the recoil on the guns is is less. Or, you know, additional ammo spots. Or, like, the, there's all kinds of things that they can build into that. And I'm excited to see it. Well, that's... I agree. I agree. Man. This looks really good though. Um, um so I can't wait to see this. Ellen, I hope this I hope this sticks. I hope this stays uh oh, it nice looks great. And smooth. L LSP and Jade though, one thing to think about is I know that there like you're right that there's a lot of other non combat tasks that need to be worked on but for squadron 42 combat is a little bit more important like they need to sort out the combat and have it feel good for a first person fps it, it has to feel good 
right? Yep. And I, I do think that, uh, especially if you just look at the, the scale of, um, of 323, I do think of most, if not all, of what we're getting is stuff that was imported from Squadron. Yeah. Um, or that is being imported from Squadron. Um, uh, I I don't think you should worry that CIG aren't thinking about the non-combat people because no. most of their most popular ships are in fact non-combat ships. Like, well, they're no. Sorry, no, go ahead. To be fair, though, everything we have seen from the FPS uh, stuff, at least recently, it is all combat. I, I yep. can understand why you are seeing, you know, it's what you're seeing. You are just, yep. this is what you are seeing. You are telling us exactly what you're seeing, and you're right. I yep. understand where you're coming from, and all one can hope is that Chris Roberts is going to stand by this whole, we want to make a life. I'm hoping, and I'm siding with you here, that, you know, optimistically, it is because it's in Squadron. You've got to do something first, haven't you? And they're doing Squadron first. Squadron is combat-based, so let's yeah. get the combat stuff done first where we can. And it's like, you started talking about the scopes and stuff, but I'm running it through in my head, and it's like the culmination of all this sort of tech, including the scopes, is going to be these Titan suits. The Titan suits aren't going, well, well I fucking hope, aren't going to be purely combat-based. But you've got to get to the point where it's like, we've made our combat suit, a Titan suit. We know what we can do with these things. Now we need to make the power loader version of this. And we need to make it fun and interesting for people who don't want to fucking piss around with a fucking gun, who do find it very entertaining, being space truckers, being space farmers. Being a space cowboy. Some people just call them Maurice. <laughs> Very nice. Um, a couple things on that. One, we know that there were like th they're already working on different types of armor, right? We've seen like the armor for oh, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. E like exterior armors for uh, firefighters as that? part the bright, of a. The bright the bright yellow one too that they have in the game right now that's um oh. my brain's not working um no i don't know it's but it's 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 entirely cargo based it's not based on combat. yeah but we know that they've already like they are they've got some branching out for non-combat armors we also mm -hmm. know and believe me i'm with you i one of the main reasons i backed was well no i backed well before it mattered but one of the things that excites me is exploration right i want exploration but they've already said that they're working on getting a tier one plan for exploration the problem with this is that they don't have a completed plan for exploration yet whereas they do for fps combat and fps combat has to be done for squadron right so the priority is combat. There's not going to be very much exploration in Squadron 42. It's all combat. And CIG honestly need to deliver a game. That said, I think yep. once, like, we're seeing now everything in 323, lots of that came from Squadron. Once their work on Squadron is done, and I think most of their, like, tweaking work is getting to be done on squadron i think you'll start seeing the other features come a lot more quickly because they're going to have a lot of people that were working on squadron that are now going to be working on um star citizen they well they, well, they are work working on, on salvage and, and, and mining yeah and they've done work on yeah. both of those mining is is in a pretty good spot but those were also easier to do than something like exploration. Mining's yeah. fairly easy. Salvage is there fairly is a, easy. Exploration is, one, is coming. There is one piece of exploration. Hard. It's our, there's one piece of exploration we're already going to be getting. So, well, no, we're getting the bones of it. Um, like once we can make map markers that matter um that are actual actual pieces of data that you know can be sold so on and so forth that is the beginning of an information economy which is really where exploration thrives 
Um, well, because because exploration is going to be all about an inform about information, um, and selling information. I mean, obviously, you might find cool things while you're out there, but a lot of it is going to be like, hey, I found a really cool, um, you know, vein of this mineral that you probably want to mine. Here's the location. I'm going to take two million credits from you. <laughs> thing is they can't they can't even do that as tier zero of exploration yet because they don't have an ability to name things even their ability to name ships is like kind of shitty right now they can't do map markers because they're completely overhauling the maps like we're not well, going to be able the to most Sorry. what was the most requested thing when cig did that big questionnaire that said you know, we can work on this for fucking years or we can get this out to you, whatever. It was exploration. Yep. yep. Exploration was way up there. Yep. Yeah, they could they could have put out the tears there with just a fucking tricorder and, you know, go find a peanut. It's your peanut. Yeah, they could they could have. But I think that what they want to do with exploration is going to be a lot more than just some unique exploration mechanics and things. I think it will also result in the culmination of a lot of many different mechanics that they need oh. to pull from. I can easily see salvaging being involved in this, repair being involved in this. I Combat has got fuck all to do with ex well, all right, not fuck all to do mm, with exploration, but it is you That's know, cool. it is very much a side effect, you know. You might get a little fight here and there, whatever. It it's not what you're looking for in exploration. It's not what CIG want to give you in exploration. It's cheap. Self self-defense. They, thank you very much, exactly. They yeah. want exploration to be fucking interesting. They want it to be exploration. You know, actual stuff like that. They they could just like, oh, here you go, here's your scanner. But I think they want to actually get, all right, look, we've got this done, we've got this out, we've got Squadron, we know combat's done. That's fine. That studio over there, they're working on um, Squadron. The rest of us, let's get down to the nitty-gritty. Expiration, we need a fucking big team for this. I want to see the ideas. I want to see what you want to do. And it's, go it's going to be the big thing i think in star citizen is exploration yeah. everything associated Definitely. with it so it can't just be a here's that it's got to be big i think it's going to be worth the wait because we all i well i say we all want it the majority a lot of people, of want, people well, and even want people it. who don't know they want it the features that will be that are part of exploration like really good like a really well developed um scanning system for example where you actually get you know really real interesting mm. information that's tied to real in-game objects, um, that because that that's all part all part and parcel with in um, exploration, right? Is you don't want to like go to a planet and then scan it and and have a thing that pops up and say there's three gold and four silver on this planet. You want a big, long, like detailed planetary survey thing, and you're like, "Oh, well, I gotta fly to this section of the planet now to get a better survey of this location because there's a mine. There's a mine there. I gotta check out. Like, you, you want there to be all this shit, right? But that's that's a big. Um, you need a lot of other gameplay systems to work. Things that like, um, like uh, persistent well, I mean entity persistent. Well, like last it's year, just, that's, hang on. that's prospecting, and it's like, yes, it is prospecting, but they can tie that into exploration. Well, well they, you can tie that of, in with part of part of part of exploration is absolutely prospecting. Absolutely, that's part a of part, the. A part that's how. Of it, that's how. Part, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a part. That's part mm, of how oh, explorers yeah. are going to make money, mm, right? Absolutely. That's, absolutely. Because um, they're, you know. I do. Th I think they're part and parcel of the same thing. Um, I do really love, and this is kind of a un not unique, probably in all of games, but I really love that they are thinking about and planning to possibly do um, things like science and research, like as actual like game mechanics. Those are really yep. hard because they're more ephemeral. Um, but they can. But Star Citizen has the op opportunity to do them really well. You can have things like a comet roving through the star system, or oh, this star is going nova, or you know, 
things like that. Um, or please go study this black hole. Um, it's doing weird shit. <laughs> like there's lots of really interesting stuff like that that you can do. But I yeah. I do think that I I mean first of all I'm liking what Jade and Native Space Patrol is saying here. I don't want I don't want Star Citizen to be okay. Here's my fucking daily dose of space combat, either on foot or into. I I want to see this living, breathing universe. I do want to sit there uh, <laughs> in real life with a cup of coffee while I'm waiting for my spaceship to refill. I just want to watch some of that shit sometimes. I just want to see a living universe. Still... I want to see that. I, I get and what they're saying. I want this I, second life kind of thing. I get it. I, I want that too. Uh, I absolutely get what they're saying as well. But if all of the evidence shows that we will be getting that. One, it's the most mm. popular thing that everyone's asking for. Two, well, what are you looking for? I know, but what are we looking at for exploration? I want to find new things. Okay, well, what is there to find right now? Not really all that much. They don't have enough points of interest on planets. They don't have any animals that are interesting to find. Like one of the things, one of the things that CIG said way back years ago at the outset was that one of the things for exploration, one of the, you know, the mission types that they were envisioning years ago was being paid to go and find a particular animal and capture it and like and, and you know take it to somewhere like those kinds of things right and and again this is a long long time ago but so i disagree with that jade honestly it's not just places she's, to fight she's right no, I, I, not, we're no. assuming we're assuming their gender. There, so apologies. The, uh, Sorry, right. no, no, hang on, no, hang on, because yeah, for the longest time we only had places to fight. What are they putting in right now? The giant distribution centers. Which guess what? Those distribution centers are not just for combat. They are for all other mission types as well. We're getting a giant, a giant location for other types for cargo for medical for other types of gameplay and yes they don't have exploration in yet and honestly i'm glad they don't have exploration in yet because the map isn't ready for it the flight experience isn't ready for, like nothing is ready for exploration please don't rush it because if they're gonna rush it we're going to get some of the shitty tier zero systems that sucked for you know six months to a year while they fixed it just, just there, because you know, um, yeah. I'm standing up. I'm, I'm standing up for you here, Jade. What if, like, I don't want combat, and it is There's combat. No it's been combat. It's just combat at the moment. It's but combat. You don't, and it's all about. But it's not how though. combat's going to work. It's not shiver. Just don't play that. It's not all. It's not all. I'm. I'm. I've I'm, played. I've played many games that felt a lot. Without ever shooting a damn weapon. Tons of them. It it just you feels know, like a lot of the information we're being given at this particular moment is very much there's emphasized very on the specific, combat. There's one very specific reason for that. I mean, <laughs> two, two episodes ago, two episodes ago, there was an entire episode about the distribution centers, and yes, there is going to be co some combat in the distribution centers, but there's also non-combat things. In fact, all of the non-combat things you can currently do in Star Citizen are available in the distribution centers. Yes, they're focused right now on combat. Do you want to know why they're focused on combat? It's because of Squadron 42, because they decided, whatever it was, two or three years ago, to finish Squadron. They put most of their resources, honestly, into finishing Squadron. So all the people that have been working on like gameplay elements and first pe or like first person feature stuff, they've all been working on Squadron to get Squadron done. That's why it's all combat right now, because what we're seeing now is Squadron is feature complete. Okay, we can port those features over to Star Citizen. Once we're done porting those features to Star Citizen from Squadron 42, guess what's going to happen? Combat's done. Okay time for other things it's time to improve the medical gameplay it's time to improve like it's it's i know um, you're right so like, so because right now there's sorry go ahead eric well i just you know 
there are cargo depots there are uh refineries there are there are places that are not com- combat focused in the game right now there's a lot of mining locations there's well you locations. know what we're going to be getting there's soon that's all really exciting stuff. at some point soon we're going to be getting base building and you know what really helps base building? The exploration to find a good spot to put yeah. down a base. That's going to be, yeah, oh, what resources do I need for my base? You know? Exactly. Well, and, and also just like just scouting for ba- base locations too. Yeah. Um, like, again, I know that's more prospecting than, than just pure unadulterated exploration, but it is part and parcel of the idea is... Um, Again, this is where a lot of explorers will make money is finding locations that are really advantageous for a base. Um, and selling information, like this whole thing, like getting an information economy working, which isn't that easy because I think they needed, first of all, I think they had to have persi- persistent entity streaming in order for that to work at all. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, it, it's not that much of a con, like, the whole concept isn't that popular in games of having information be first of all rich enough that it matters um be have it 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 has to have the information itself has to have characteristics how old it is how accurate it is what did you use to obtain this information um you know all of these all of these aspects to it and then that information then has to have value to somebody else so it has to have a price like there's a lot of shit going on with an economy like that, and so I, I do think it's taken time. But I I do agree though. I do I do think that like for me personally, like I'm not a huge combat player, um. So I'm gonna enjoy Squadron, and I will probably fight from time to time in the game. But really, what I probably want to do is things like mining and exploration and trade, um. But, you know, they've done big things like cargo refactors and such. They didn't have anything to do with combat, really. Um, it made piracy a little more fun, but, you know. I, here, I, look. Hang on, hang on, I'm, hang on. Base okay, building go ahead, go ahead. is not going to be a 2027 thing. No. It's, I, see what, I see what you're saying. I understand where you're coming from. But I don't think it's going to be a huge factor because it, it they're not, they've not got to reinvent the wheel here, base building. It's not going to be that high. It's like, yeah, all right, all right, well, we just need to work out a uh, significant chain of events and uh, that leads up to it. It's not going to be there. I would genuinely, and I, I, I've been trying to think of how to phrase this so it doesn't sound like I'm uh, confronting you, but I, I, it, so please know that this is a genuine and sincere request. Of, I would love to know what you would like from expiration because I sometimes sit here and it's like the only thing I can think of is like, you know, find derelict stuff find some relics go explore in a cave but it's like go explore in a cave all right for what some rare mushrooms well and i think we're going to be getting that but lots of that required things like persistent entity streaming right we needed a larger well, database even, even, and a more hell even harvestables which are not you want... which haven't been in for that long you know <laughs> but like everything's going to be unique at some point so in exploration well, you should be able to find unique weapons unique well, items for ships well, ha- ha- hang, on, hang, on, hang on hang on i need to get this straight in my head when you say think of exploration in star trek like do you mean like the star trek tng monster of the week things it's like th- these are quite significant changes to the universe really to the galaxy that they never, never really mention ever again because um, it's going to be and then you've also got to think to yourself how are you going to have it so it's like like star trek all right let's look at star trek each and every single week it's very unique very cool experience and when they do well, this exploration it's very dynamic things how are you gonna how you can't program that for millions of people to have can you yeah can i just also comment go ahead go you got to be a little bit realistic here because a lot of the exploration in in star trek was big political things like finding a new race and solving their 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 world's problems that is a very difficult thing to make a lot of in a video game also like Um, yeah you 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 could 
literally program monster of the week encounters for literally every single player but that's literally millions that you you either just have the exact same one that everyone does the exact same thing in and then it's like well that's not expiration or it's tailor-made to each experience in which case you're oh. gonna have to have someone that sits there and makes it custom to each that's and every so, single see, one extra I, times i agree with you on that one jade like ruins ruins Absolutely. Ruins, 100%. That is something they can easily do. That is doable. Let's do that. Things like, I am going to find this new civilization and I'm going Ooh, to solve their... Question. I found these ruins in Star Citizen. Now what do I do with them? So what? Right now, nothing. Because you can't sell the map location data. You can't investigate them. You can't but, scan. You, there no, no, is no, no, nothing no, no, there. No, no. Th- 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 what, what, what am I doing with this? You know, Sell, sell this to me. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this in the game for you. What, what's the point of me putting these ruins in there? What do you do with them then? You get to these ruins and, okay, can I, can I sell yep. to you? Go. Okay. So uh, there's a whole bunch of things you can do. Most of them, you know, their gameplay mechanics that build on each other. Things like linguistics, um, trying to decipher what the languages, um, things like just having just even the, just the map location, even just being like. I now know that this ruin is here. I know that there's a UEE branch of the government that wants to explore ruins. I'm going to sell this information to them. Cool. There you go. You right away, you have a way for the player to go find a cool thing, look at the cool thing, and then sell the information so they get a reward. Bonus. But there's things like linguistics. There's like relics you can find. Maybe you find some really weird alien weapon um, and you have to try and figure out how to use it. Maybe you find, I don't know, some really strange relic that you end up needing to go on this big, long quest line to try and figure out what the hell it is by chasing scientists around the the game world. Um, there's lots of options on what to do once you find uh, ruins. Um, but, uh, and even just lore, I- even <laughs> just lore, even just lore. Even if it's like, I found this ruin and it tells me something about the game. About the lore of the universe. Go ahead. Okay. So, yeah, we do have languages. We, I'm sure we'll have ruins. I'm sure there will be... They've already started laying the groundwork for... Uh, what's that alien race that we got? Like, their box or something recently. Right? We like, got their box. Are you, we got their are you there's gonna, that box thing. That you can, but, like... Kithak? 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 I think it's the Kithak. And, like, they've, they've been laying this groundwork for a long time. But you know what there is in Stanton? Guess what? Stanton is a fully explored system. Like, it's one of the most populated yeah. and most thoroughly already explored systems out there. Two, do you know what they don't have that they honestly really need for a lot of... Was it the Bandit Cube? I don't know. They've been setting a bunch of stuff up. But what they really need for exploration, honestly, because a a lot of exploration is not going to be, hey, I've found a new language. They were actually very clear a long time ago where if, if people found a new jump point or a new planet that had never been found, you would be able to name that jump point, name that planet. But that's going to be one out of a million players, right? That's going to be hard to do. What they need, though, for the more common exploration, honestly, is um, quanta. Because lots of what you're going to be doing for common exploration is finding the things that other people want, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. be, be, yeah. But Jade, there's no system to name them by people right now. There's no system for that, and that's not a very easy thing to implement. I think the I think the new um, Moby Glass and new map probably will have that as a feature. Um, but again, it's something we haven't had until now. Um, yeah. So well, even not even now. I, don't, I, I mean, next match. to be to be fair as well, I, I don't. I don't see why when it's when it's ready when it's implemented why we can't name newly discovered planes well we probably planet. will Although be I suppose, to, I suppose except... the only reason would be maybe macro Cause... detailing it too much well no the reason you is because planet, players are going to name it yeah, Big we'll Chungus 
<laughs> well, the no, not gonna... my this, 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 yeah, this, but that's the same as it when they name the, the jump points. That it's going to go through a review process because it's the internet and it's that's that's compulsory. But you're not going to be able but... to do a review process for every single river on a planet. Yeah, you yeah, can, you can. there's probably too much, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, No Man's Just Sky did it, but No Man's Sky was it. single player only. Yes. Well, for a long time. It, but AI can review it, but AI will also censor out, <laughs> like, boat if it feels like it. Like, I... I, I <laughs> oh, what? I'm, I... Oh, right. Oh, right. Should, no, I wouldn't trust AI to review I don't think we're that. Solve no, all world absolutely problems. not. No. The thing is... Look, I love, and, and we're going to have to end after this because we are a bit over, but I want to, exploration will be happening. But exploration is also the most complicated of the gameplay elements that they've talked about. Science, ooh, science is easy. Look, I scanned a thing and I got some science points. And they're going to do it more complicated than that because the fucking Star <laughs> Citizen, they're insane. I love science points. I love science points. But, like, tier zero medical is, hey, I've got a beam. They're talking about higher tiers of medical being, like, you have to actually do procedures on people. Like, like they're fucking insane. All right? Yep. I want a science gun, but <laughs> wasn't, there was never a point where everything was just done with a gun, though. Uh, you hear someone, you shoot them more. Oh, well, no, no. right now it is it is beam <laughs> citizen, right? Everything is a, everything is a beam. Yeah. So I want my exploration. Much, uh, beam. The ironic thing is, they said before we got to this far, <laughs> we're never going to be able to do beam weapons in this game. It's, now everything's it's, a fucking beam weapon. <laughs> yeah, they got but, so excited by being able to do beams, they're just like, Fuck, let's go now. The fucking heel gun has recoil. <laughs> <laughs> I I just I it's want the, to it's the power of the healing, okay? <laughs> it's it's got real kickback the... on this heel. <laughs> the automatons uh, are <sighs> fighting being or the, no, it's it's all of the the nanobots because when you pull the trigger, they all have to like start crawling out and they mm. they crawl along the beam and that crawling of them uh, that provides the recoil. Uh, <laughs> Look. Actually, I think you'll find because you have an injury, the law of physics say that an equal and opposite reaction must have happen. So you need an outjury, which is <laughs> coming out as recoil. <laughs> I love it. Um, the outjury is calling the <laughs> causing the recoil. I like it. Girl, I think it's really, I really say out loud. <laughs> it was questionable. It was very questionable. <laughs> But I, I think it's important to oh remember the number one, the number of <laughs> ships that they have made and talked about repeatedly that focus entirely on exploration. The Odyssey. Uh, there's lots of but them. There's lots of them. But the most 315B of all, you've got... is one of the first ships. <laughs> yeah. But at the very end oh, Jade, of the list... Oh, Jade, the number of times I've made fast car cringe or say, Jesus Christ, ship. I have to sense myself very much when I'm here. I taught Fastcar everything he knows. That's not true. He taught me the fucking worst, terrible stuff. It's like, I did not want that in my head, Fastcar. Why do you keep reminding me about this as well? <laughs> so, at, at the end, at the end of the day, there is the it's Endeavor. Nine. And the endeavor, endeavor is going to oh, take... Oh, I love the Endeavor literally forever to make because there's farming well we don't have any farming in the game yet there's exploration we don't have any exploration in the game yet there's science we don't have any science in the game yet there's long like long distance like telescoping we don't have that the two ships come apart we don't have like there's so fucking much to this game and I it's hate... gonna keep going, boys and girls. Gonna... <laughs> but and, but seriously, and I I hate to uh... say this, PSs are easy. Oh, they are. Point yeah. point easy. gun especially, shoot. Honestly, that's you... easy. 
it's a lot easier than than doing mechanics like exploration are not very well developed in games it's it's a harder thing you got to be much more creative much more imaginative about what you're trying to do but so. i think but- jade uh lsp and i have a very similar idea about what we want in a game we want star trek the game and yep. there was a period yeah. of time when star trek online when it was owned by perpetual when perpetual had it and they were hyping it up and promising they were promising star citizen basically and um i want that i i i would love star citizen to be a star trek game basically and it to be that Here's i open. don't know if that is even possible to code but can fuck, i just i want that i want that so fucking much i just want to finish because we all want exploration i bought the biggest fucking exploration ship there is and wrote like a 15 series like fucking fan fiction about it because i love it I also want CIG to do it well. I don't want them to have a science gun and I scan the mushroom and get my science points. But, and and I'm going to go back to something I said earlier, which is where my faith rests. Because CIG, honestly, they did not have to make food disappear as you eat it. That was not fucking required. And they're fucking insane for doing so. A thousand games have made mining mechanics, and this is the one that's the most complex mining mechanic that I've seen, personally. Yep. And look at their, even, like, their plans for medical go above, like, everything they do, it may start simple, but they go to inordinate amounts of detail from magazines yep they are very detail-oriented folks and yes i do hope that all the people who worked on all the fps stuff do then get to go on and work for work on other things other game features if it's something that they're good at some people are just good at fps and i don't necessarily want someone that's focused entirely on fps's creating my exploration mechanic because i don't want my science gun I, I I guess what I'm well, trying what to say really is, good science gun shit? <laughs> I mean, if it's a really good fine science gun, portal. fine. Uh, I do love Portal science gun. Um, they need they do. Jade, you're absolutely right. They do need a science exploration team. There might be one that we just don't know about yet because it's not ready to be shown I off. Need it. They do need one. That's the only yep. way you're going to be able to get what we want, right? To get, I'm t- I'm yep. talking to Jade and LSP here. To get what we want, they need a fucking team because I mean, you got you you. you I want I want that. I I want the only way I can see that really doing is if you've got some sort of collective team to be able to think of how you can make these encounters actually genuinely special and unique. Or at least feel special to each person that encounters them, but also be able to create enough that it's like, oh, well, I did this. No shit, I did this. Because there's nothing worse to ruin exploration than I did this. Oh, oh, wait, I, I did exactly the same thing. The thing is, that's not. They have shown so far that they will apply that level of detail to everything. So I think we need to give mm. them the benefit of the doubt that they will be applying that level of detail to exploration. Anyway, we are way over time. I'm sorry, Shiver. What oh, have wait, you got going so on this week? Uh, this week, uh, which week is it? Yes, this week we've got Vampire the Masquerade uh, coming up. Uh, usual time, uh, Friday night going into Saturday morning. Uh, I will announce it soon. Uh, as this chronicle ends, we will actually be doing a Star Trek campaign in its stead for a bit. Nice. And with oh, that's that... Twitch.tv slash Table Horror. Yes. Tell people where it uh, is. <laughs> Where is it? Um, well, if you miss us, uh, you can just come back next week when we'll do the same thing again. If you miss um, us, you need to practice your FPS. Yeah, you just get better <laughs> aim. I like it.
Love you all. Thank Happy you weekend, so much everybody. for uh, listening to us. And um, remember, pineapple.